So we have learned all the basics that we need to know about exponential functions and how our graph can be transformed using the information that we've found before. And so now let's see how this actually fits in with a real life example. So here is the most common application of exponential functions, compound interest. So if you ever want to invest money into an account, maybe a CD account or something along that sort, it would most likely be compounded in one of these fashions. And so that basically means you've earned interest off of your interest, which of course you want it to be. So if you've invested $100, at the end of the year you have $105, you want to earn the interest on the extra $5, rather than just simply earning interest off of your initial amount. So the formula that's given for that is A equals P times 1 plus R over N to the NT. And so what do each of these stand for? A is the amount at the end, P is the principal, that's what it stands for, which is basically the initial amount invested. Now, I'm considering this to be an investment, but if you wanted to think about this differently, you could actually be thinking about maybe your student loans. So principal would then stand for the amount that you've initially borrowed. Okay. Um, rate is the percentage rate, how high a percent you're getting. Nowadays, it's not very much. A while ago, it was quite a bit more. N is the number of times it's compounded per year. And last, T stands for the amount of time in years you've had this investment. So we have a simple example over here. You are investing $100,000 at 6.5%, which is pretty phenomenal nowadays. And this is compounded semi-annually. So we want to find a function that satisfies all of these conditions here. Okay, so we have our generic function. This generic function is typically a function of t, because we want to know the amount after t years, so that's our unknown. We know the initial amount invested is $100,000. One plus, we know our rate is 6.5%. You should never be plugging in percents. You should always be plugging in decimals. So I convert this to a decimal by moving my decimal place over to. So that's the same thing as 0 0.065 over n, the number of times it's compounded per year. So semi-annually means it's done twice a year. And then that is to the exponent to the 2t. 2 stands again twice per year, and T is our unknown in this case. We want to find the amount of money in the account after 0 years, 4 years, 8 years, and 10 years. So basically that means all we need to do is plug in each of these numbers respectively into my equation. So since we have this equation set up, I suggest that you pause the video and plug in each of these numbers on your own and see what values you get out. And then take those values and graph them on a function. Okay, so let me just do a couple of these by hand, and then hopefully you can figure it out from there. So the amount after zero years is $100,000. If I were to simplify the inside of this equation here by typing it in my calculator, I get 1.0325, and I suggest not to round anything, keep everything as exact as possible, to the 2 times t, where in this case my 2 is 0. So that means I have 0 as an exponent. Anything with 0 as an exponent turns out to be 1. So I have $100,000 times 1, and so the amount after 0 years is $100,000. Which, if you think about it, it makes sense. If my initial investment is $100,000 and my time is zero, meaning it's at the very start of my program, the amount that I should have is $100,000. Okay, let me just plug in the next one just for a confirmation to show you how to do this. And the next one is plugging in four. 
So I have 2 times 4 here, which is 8. So I just need to take this 1.0325 and take it to the 8th power. And I would do that on my calculator by using the caret key, the up key. And so that gives me 1.29 something or another. If I take that times $100,000, meaning I just move my decimal place over 5 units, that would give me 129157.75. This is an investment, so our answer here is 129,157 and 75 cents. Okay, if I wanted to do this for 8 and 10, I would just plug in 8 and 10 the exact same way. So I have those simplified for us here. And you see, after zero years, I have $100,000. After four years, I have this amount that we just specified. Eight years, I have 166. And after 10 years, I have $189,000. So we now want to graph this function. So I don't want to start with my standard coordinate system here. That doesn't make any sense. So I'm going to talk about where my x and my y values should be. I only need to talk about values in the first quadrant because time, which is representing my x-axis here, can only be positive, and my amount that I have at the end of my time can only be positive because that's the amount that I can get out. If my time is zero, the amount that I've got now is $100,000. So I will just label here as 100000 and to keep my scale consistent, then that means here needs to be 200000 the most important part of switching the things on your graph is keeping your scale consistent. Okay, okay so at zero, I have $100,000. So let me define a scale for my t-axis, keeping, again, my tick, tick marks consistent. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. At zero, I have 100000 At four, I have 129,000. So that would be here. At 8, I have 166,000. And at 10, I have 189,000. So this is my graph here. And it might look like it's a straight line. Okay, but if I were to graph these very precisely, we should see that this is an exponential function, and we should see that it is increasing on an exponential basis. And so there is my graph of A of T. Okay. Let me tweak this a little bit to learn a very specific value, and that very specific value is the number E. But before I get that, let's look at this example here. My principal is 1, my rate is 100%, and my time is 1. So what would that function be if my principal is 1, my rate is 100%, if I convert that to a decimal place, that would be 1. It doesn't specify what n is, or the number of times it's compounded, so I'm going to leave that as my unknown, which means this is a as a function of n. And then to the n times t, where I'm looking at the amount after one year. So if I simplify this, I have 1 plus 1 over n to the n. That's my function. We want to know, does this function have a horizontal asymptote? Well, it might be very hard to determine this as is because this is definitely not one of our basic exponential functions. And if I wanted to tweak this using the transformations, we definitely could do that. But it might actually be a little bit easier in this problem to plug in values. So what's happening if my n value is 0? Okay. Well, I cannot plug in 0 because that would give me something undefined. So that's no good. What happens if my n value is 1? That gives me 1 plus 1 over 1 to the first power. Or 1 plus 1, which is 2, 2 to the first power is 2. So 
the value that we get out here is 2 exactly. Well, let me start changing this a little bit more drastically than what we normally do. What happens if I plug in 100? I get 1 plus 1 over 100 to the 100th power. And of course, we're going to need our calculator to do this for us. So I'm just going to type this in my calculator. 1 plus 1 over 100 to the 100th power. And we see we get 2.7048. And of course, it goes on forever, but I think that's a good representation. 2.7048. What happens if I were to plug in a thousand? So one plus one over a thousand to the a thousandth power. We get two point seven one six nine. And let's go a little bit farther. How about 10,000? 1 plus 1 over 10,000 to the 10,000. And we get 2.718. And we'll do it one more time. How about let's go really big this time and we'll go 1 million. So 1 plus 1 over 1 million to the 1 millionth power. And see, we get 2.71828. So notice that the larger that these numbers get, they start to get closer and closer and closer together. Well, there's actually going to be a horizontal asymptote right here. And that horizontal asymptote is approximately this number right here but it's defined by the letter E. So the letter E is a lot like the letter pi, pi 3.141519. It goes on and on forever, but it has a very specific meaning. This number E it is an approximation. It goes on and on forever, but it has a very specific meaning. This meaning is the horizontal asymptote of a function that has these very specified values such as D. So the approximate value for E is 2.718281828. Now it might look like it's repeating, but it actually does not repeat. The next number is 4, and then it goes on and on forever. So this number never stops, and it never repeats. It never terminates. So this is considered to be an irrational number. Okay. So let's do some very basic examples with E then. We want to figure out what E to all of these exponents are going to be. And we're just going to use our calculator to determine them. So on my calculator first, I want E to the third power. To find E, it is above the natural log button here. And so I'm going to do the second button and then the E. E is defined as an exponent, hence the exponent section. And we just always need to type in an exponent here. And so in this case, this is e to the third power. So e to the third is considered to be 20.0855. And I believe this tells us to round to four decimal places. So 20.0855. I suggest that you pause the video to see if you can come up with the answers for b, c, and d on your own. Okay, for b, we just need to type in e to the negative. So e to the negative, what was it again? 0 0.23. And that gives us 
0 0.7945. E to the 0, I do not need to plug into my calculator. Anything to the 0 exponent is going to be simplified to 1. E to the first power is just defining what E is. And so that is 2.7183 if I were to round up to four decimal places. And so this is just getting used to plugging E in on the calculator. 